Hello, new lovers! Welcome to our channel. I'm Lily. Today we've got our hands on a reasonably priced EV for a change. As we've been curious about this car for quite some time, just for how it looks, let me show you this Aura Good Cat in its most passionate color. So let's just start behind the name. The Aura Good Cat is a literal translation from the Chinese name Hao Mao, which means good cat. Accordingly, it came from the Chinese saying, whether it is a good black cat or a white cat, as long as it can catch mice, it is a good cat. I love that. Aura gave all of its other models different names with the cat, such as the black cat, or the lightning cat, or the ballet cat, and we all love it. Some other people think that it also reminds them of the Japanese figuring of a cat, uh, with a red banner in the front and with one of its paws in a beckoning gesture suggesting that good luck is coming in. No matter what, good luck, good cat suggests good luck, and we love that. However, in the European market, our good cat has got a new name. It's called the Funky Cat, which is a bit silly in my opinion. Subscribe, like, and comment our, on our channel. It is very important to us. I know the good cat looks like it's got a teeny body on the outside, but it's got a big belly on the inside. Look at me sitting here with spacious leg room, shoulder room, and headroom. I even got enough room to fool around with this, let's say, not even small steering wheel that gives me comfort while I drive. I remember when I drive the ET5, I felt a little bit cluttered right here because it's got a thick wheel. I think everything here is of proper size, including the seat here that is wide and solid that gives me firm support on the, on the back. I, uh, this car, the interior color is kind of like a pinky dark red or a beige red, red because it matches the outside color of the car, which I like, but I wouldn't pick this color if I'm going to buy an Aura. All these buttons uh, also remind me of the mini series or the mini clubman I have, which uh, is interesting and functional, but they're made a little bit cheap looking because of the shiny silver uh, texture that uh, adds to it. Uh, the glove box has spacious room. Neo, take note. And I also like the step back design of the storage where you know where to keep stuff logically. Bottles going here, phone charge going here, the USB charge, the gears are here, and you got your phone charge here, another little storage box for the passenger to uh, keep the phone, and another little storage. I don't know if this is an add-on or it comes with the car, and there's reasonable space down the glove box, and uh, while you drive, you could comfortably rest your arm here and fool around with the dry steering wheel. Uh, another thing that I'm not quite used to the car when I got in it today is uh, the many buttons it's got. Like all the buttons right here and I haven't figured out what each of the function is. And uh, rear side mirror adjustment comes here, which I always uh, like, even on our EC6. And steering wheel adjustment comes right here. Uh, it seems I can't push it, push it further or pull it out, so I guess that's it. Uh, these are just intuitive. Uh, I think basically once you get used to the car, you'll get used to all the buttons. But let's be honest, there's something cheap about this car. Like the stitches here, the vinyls, and in particular these screens. So these are two 10.3 inch separate screens that are connected in one piece. However, note the edge around here that leaves very little room for the graphics to show. And that's my first impression today. When I try to find something on the screen, the characters and the information are kind of fuzzy, especially under the light. And I'm not sure if the screen uh, brightness adapts to the light. And 
uh, it's got some tricky menu uh, and or so-called infotainment system with all the apps, but you have to navigate them uh, level by level to find what you want. And maybe uh, due to the characteristics of the Chinese market, the infotainment has way too much apps that are not intuitively designed like little squares on Tesla's or on Neo. So. I might just not use all these apps and use navigation here instead. Navigation is a little bit laggy, like there's a time lapse between where I am and where uh, the navigation tells me to go. So it's not very responsive and the dashboard here showing all the driving information also looks a little bit cheap. Uh, I think graphics wise, uh, there's much improvement. Uh, but driving wise and uh, space wise in the interior, even in the back passenger seat, uh, things are not bad. This car that I'm driving now has a 45.4 kilowatt hour battery and the mileage is 400 kilometers. The car has a 170 bph electric motor powering the front wheels and it could achieve a 0 to 60 miles per hour in about 8.3 seconds which is not the quickest among other electric cars but with a higher trim you get ZPR performance with longer mileage uh, for a 63 kilowatt hour battery, you get up to 500 kilometers of range and I will test it today. Right now I have about 395 kilometers left on the range and I will drive for about 45 kilometers uh, for real and I'll see uh, how much uh, this drive can cost me how much range this drive will cost me for real. I have been with this car for 15 minutes and it surprises me. I am having so much fun driving it because I don't have to adapt myself to the car. It is like uh, kind of like my previous Mini Clubman. It's easy to drive, it's small, it accommodates itself rightly in the traffic. Um, I don't have the kind of culture shock I had when I had to deal with that Model 3 as our replacement car. Uh, Noise-wise, uh, I could still hear the traffic outside, but uh, that's it. Uh, the car doesn't give you a bumpy feeling when you pass through the bumps on the road. It's, it's normal. And even compared to an engine car like the Audi Q2 I had to drive previously, it's even quieter than that. So in every perspective, it's an EV and it delivers the speed and performance, acceleration and braking that I am expecting on an EV. And plus, I don't have to deal with a gigantic animal like our EC6 as you feel the weight of the car while you drive. This car feels light. And I'm sure quality-wise, because it's past the European uh, NACP 5-star rating in terms of security, it's going to be very safe on the road uh, and ZP. So it's conventional and useful. I like the idea of a sunroof and the sunshade in the car as you get more flexibility with the air in the car. Uh, the, uh, it's not like the glass seal on the EC7 or EC6 or even the x pond where you can't even open the top of your car. So if you want more air while you drive, consider this as an option. Now, what do I like about the exterior of the Good Cat? I like how it looks like a Mini in the front, as it reminds me of my former Mini. I like how it looks like a hatchback in the back. This hybrid design is functional and funky, to be honest. 
The car is equipped with 18-inch wheels and charging ports, two different charging ports on two sides. Uh, what I especially like is the size of the window and the rear side mirrors, and that applies to the view you get uh, from the rear side mirror. That means the window right here. This isn't what NEO does with the ET5, nor the Xpone does with the P7, nor even what NEO does with our EC6, because I get very little rear side view from the uh, glass right here. With this car, you're not only uh, feeling spacious, uh, on the seat, you also feel that you have spacious view to monitor the traffic. Uh, as such, you don't have to rely so much on the navigation or sometimes faulty uh, alert system. Look, I'm holding a good puppy and a good cat, and we're both loving how spacious the car gets in the back. If I push the passenger seat forward to the end, look how much leg room I have here. There's also plenty of shoulder room and the headroom on top of my head. And, um, this compares so much better than the ET5, when not only me, but one of our passengers had trouble getting into the car. I guess this is a reasonable space for a person of six foot two or 186. And uh, it offers a comfortable driving experience. Also, the window can go down to the bottom which is also neither what NEO does with the ET5 nor x -Pond does with its P7. And a half opening window is something that we don't like on an EV. And look, without any passenger in the front, you could push the seat further and look how much leg room I have here. You might even hold a bigger puppy. Now Randy and I are going to test the boot space of the car with the back seats laid, uh, laid down. Uh, there's a trigger right here, just this leather handle and you pull it so you can uh, put down the back seat. Look, that's a decent space, but remember you have to take off this hood right here and oh, it's, not, it's not so hard to take it off but uh, it looks kind of cheap, actually. Uh, now look, there's a step <laughs> where you put the back seats down, and uh, I don't think that's really convenient if you want to put some uh, heavy big stuff on a flat surface. So, not very convenient. Stevie! So let's talk about the elephant in the room, pricing. In 2023, Aura has decided to drop the car price across all its models in the Chinese market, including this good cat. To be more competitive in a market dominated by such giants like the Li Auto or Neo. So this car currently sells from 120 to 180,000 RMB, which is very attractive to consumers who are considering a co compatible size of a car with high performance. I'm sure in the European or even in the Malaysian market, the Aura will offer you a reasonable price to get what you want because it really has all the functions that you want from an EV, such as keyless entry, adaptive cruise control, speed, performance, and a spacious interior to accommodate you and your family. So what's our judgment on the car? I think it's a competitive model within its price range, or even a little bit beyond to be competitive with the x P7. I like the interior and the driving experience of the car, and I think you should consider getting this car if you have a humble budget. Subscribe to our channel, comment, and like our video. It means a lot to us.